trigger happy and I give less than a fuck. Love me or hate me, I'ma show no rip shit up. It's Mr. Nothing, nice on a mic stand. Mike in the left and the zest in my right hand. I took a puff, had enough now, hold up. If that was in dope, niggas getting rolled up. Yo How goes it, folks? I'm gonna. This is Acid Roots. I'm going to talk to you about the concept of one-hit wonders a bit. So it's a tactic I kind of use to avoid, you know, as a music critic, I, you know, when you talk about like a one-hit wonder and stuff, something that kind of serves, it's a little bit more partial for a music critic to talk about a one-hit wonder because it's kind of the critic's responsibility to kind of convey that because they're the ones that people turn to to say, okay, this person really is bunk and sucks ass. So to a music critic, it's more to me like an insult for a music critic to call someone a one-hit wonder more so than your average Joe, just because they know their whole catalog. I mean, someone who only knows like one or two songs by like MC Hammer compared to someone who knows everything that they've done and can safely say, yes, MC Hammer is a one-hit wonder. And that's kind of the thing. So with the music critic, a weapon that I kind of use to help bolster the concept behind lessening the impact of saying to certain musicians, yes, you are a one-hit wonder, and you, out of everything you've done, you have one good song. Out of everything you've done, you have one good song. I would have to say that uh, the weapon that I would use at times for this is to find at least two songs off their project that's supposedly only a one-hit album. Because it's, for, for one thing, a musician out of everything they've done can have one hit song and then some musicians will just have one hit song from like an album and anytime that happens where you look at like an album like butterfly by crazy town where that's just the only hit song to that album i mean even though they were one hit wonders in general just using that as like a context to me there actually is more saving grace to the album with butterfly on it from crazy town and that's kind of what i'll do is i'll find like a secondary hit the second best song even if it is not even a 50th as good as the hit single that hit number one or number four or whatever on the billboard or whatever chart at least being able to say that this is the moment that captures the attention the second best because there's a lot of casual listeners out there that you, you'll go with vibes and it's like yeah this is a brilliant song it's a hit and that type stuff but then people will try to listen to the second single and they won't get the same feeling but to me i look at it in a lot of context for example if there's like a hot club song that is a number one song but then the second single is only like you know, like a 50th of what the first single is. It just kind of, you look at it like if that, if the first single is a Friday night song, then the second single is just a Wednesday night song. You know, just supposing in the context of someone who has a job and has to be at work Monday through Friday, what do most people typically do on a Wednesday night when they have work the next day? You can still go out to a bar. You're just not going to get shit faced and you're just not going to have, 13 shots or more than 13 shots and that's kind of the situation does that mean you have to be stone cold sober on a wednesday night no and that's kind of the concept i just think there's a lot of people that don't get like the tempo change when it comes to some of those singles and sometimes it may not even be within a party setting it might just go from like an nsfw setting to like an sfw setting which is not safe for work to safe for work to where this single is for the works st type stuff that you would hear at your job and whatever you're doing at your job and that kind of stuff so there's just plenty of situations the singles they're not not just to talk about rap party settings where they're just about drinking and smoking but just all sorts of different switches of the guard even if there's like a secondary there's plenty of situations like that i always try to make sure as a music critic to find the second best song on an album just to be able to really be able to say that whether or not these guys are something because when i look at mc hammer for example like what what do most people what does 99 percent of people think is his best song can't touch this but i tried and even though this song to me is not even a 100th as good as can't touch this i still bought this song just to support the fact 
that is the closest thing to anything he's been able to do and that's the song here comes the hammer so that can't touch this is actually the second song you hear if you purchase the album with that on there and the first song you hear that mc hammer felt like you should hear before you hear can't touch this was here comes the hammer now it's a pretty bad song but it's somehow it has like like i said it has the most distant kind of charisma on there that most people are probably going to hate the song but at least to me is like the the most salvageable out of everything off that project and i think that that's very important I think that that's a very important concept to kind of have is just something you have to be, I mean, folks got to be able to give like that sort of stuff on a project, but at least I, I can't really commend MC Hammer, but is this kind of like something you would say, like if you're in an elevator with someone like, hey, you know, uh, here comes the hammer I can listen to on an elevator, at least something of that magnitude, just some distant way distant compliment that you could give at least to give some degree of dap for it but you know there's other ones like you know me talking about the song butterfly i felt like the the dis the, the the single that came out after butterfly even though it didn't chart in america i felt like revolving door by crazy tom was crazy town was pretty good it was very mellow was still a song for the ladies did not have the up-tempo energy of butterfly but at least it tried to put out like the effort as far as that went. So I give it credit for that. Like I said, it's kind of, it gets like distant dap. That's, that's kind of the concept there is at least saying to me, it's a good song, but I think in terms of a casual setting, it may not catch on as much, but I like the effort that it's shown and it does kind of have some hookiness to it. So that's kind of the stuff is just being able to find those secondary moments because you never know. I mean, really you look at some of these situations not every single situation is going to be a turned up setting like a Friday night party or a Thursday night football game or a Sunday night basketball game on television, something amongst those settings. You look at it, well, what do you want to do if it's Monday afternoon, you just woke up and, you know, you have to get food in a few hours, so you've got some time to kill. I mean, those are just situations. I don't know. I, I I kind of am a believer, a firm believer in the fact that not every single situation has to be lit and litty. It's not exactly as if every situation that you face in life has to be a 10 out of 10. That's kind of the concept when you look at it and the tempo changes on some of these songs. It's like, oh, well, that is a good. I mean, I do like to have two good club songs. I, I definitely am not like Eminem has the ability to do that. 50 Cent does. But for some of these folks that are just one-hit wonders and you say, well, oh, these guys suck ass, I hate them, They're everything about them is terrible, they actually might have, if you look hard enough, a second single that's at least salvageable, even if it's not even like a tenth or a twentieth of what the first single is. This is something to keep in mind. 